S. Rama Subramaniam, co-chairman of Feedback Infra, now joins in. Hi, Mr. Subramaniam. Good afternoon, and thanks so much for joining us. One of the experts we spoke to um, indicated that you know this is a positive, um, you know, as a headline, but it's too little, too late. How much of a relief will it actually provide on the ground? And have you guys done any study to quantify the kind of relief uh, you know most of the road developers in India will get? Um, I'd just like to echo what uh, you said. I think it's a good first step, uh, but it is actually a little uh, insignificant. Uh, our own estimates are that about, uh, you know, if you talk about the original 40 projects that were there, uh, out of that roughly about half uh, hadn't even gone into construction, and so those uh, obviously don't even kind of come into the picture. But out of the balance, perhaps about, uh, a balance about 50% will qualify under the uh, stress formula of the Rangarajan Committee. So our own feeling, and this is uh, also borne out by an NHI uh, estimate put out yesterday, saying if you look at 1,50,000 crores that were stuck in the premium rescheduling, uh, our estimate is that about 20% of this premium will get released as a result of uh, projects that pre-qualify and as a result of developers coming forward and taking up this uh, revenue shortfall mechanism. So about 25 to 30,000 crores of premium will get affected or will get uh, positively impacted by this uh, happening that has happened yesterday. Okay. Mr. Ramasubramaniam, I just actually wanted to focus on one point which was rebidding. In terms of projects which would come up for rebidding, for example, the GMR project also, uh, would there be sort, any sort of incremental premium that we could see on the rebidding norms then or the rebidding that takes place? Yeah, as I said, because this is only a good first step and there are many more to be done, this whole issue of how premia will be bid out in projects that come up, whether for rebidding or for new projects, uh, is still to be seen. For example, you know, we have this is a special dispensation that has been given to these uh, 30, 40 odd projects. What we don't have a clue about is saying, will the model concession agreement going forward for the new projects which are going to be bid out or rebid? Uh, will they have a clause which permits these kind of resets or renegotiations as part and parcel of the concession agreement uh, without falling back on this Article 28 of the Model Concession Agreement which permits uh, this special dispensation? So I think developers in the sector as a whole is looking towards a concession agreement where this kind of reset is built into the concession agreement. That is number one. Number two is I think we are negatively imp impacted by the delay in the uh, setting up of the highways regulator and the passage of the regulatory authority bill. I think that's a negative uh, impact, so it will obviously have an impact on bids coming in higher. Third is that there is a dispute resolution tribunal mechanism set up for PPP projects. The bill is still pending uh, clearance by the parliament. So whether it becomes a highways authority and a regulator or whether it becomes a DRT bill and a therefore a tribunal, whether it is a single tier uh, appeal or a two tier appeal, all this has to be decided. So coming back to your question, I think bids will come in higher because we have not yet cleared all these uncertainties surrounding the entire sector. Out of the, you indicated that about 50% of the original uh, you know, project will get a benefit or some sort of relief um, from the premium rescheduling. Any particular names that you'd like to give us and which projects, um, you know, of a GVK, of a, you know, perhaps a GMR or any of these listed infrastructure companies which could benefit? Uh, you know, GMR and GVK, both the KUA project, the Kishangar to Daipur on the bad project as well as the Shurpuri Devas of GVK, uh, I understand both will qualify under the uh, stress relief formula. Uh, but having said that, uh, there are statements by both the companies to say that the 2% uh, uh, penal interest rate over the bank rate and the bank guarantee that's being demanded of these developers, I don't know whether even after qualifying such developers would come forward to take the proposal. So this little bit of uh, back and forth tugging between developers and NHEI and the ministry is uh, currently on. I don't know how it will pan out. So the current names that are doing the rounds are obviously uh, Ashoka, Belcon, IVRCL, mm. uh, Gammon, uh, GMR, GBK. I think these developers will uh, benefit under the formula. Okay, we have Pragya joining into this conversation as well, considering that she looks at uh, the stocks and the projects very closely. Pragya, go ahead. 
thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Uh, you know, the NHA chairman, Mr. R. P. Singh, today clarified that you know a lot of these four to six laning projects will not be benefited. Uh, you know, because of this, uh, uh, there, there is a moratorium uh, that there is. Uh, uh, you know, in these four to six laning projects. So, what is the kind of actual net impact that you see for some of these companies? A lot of these larger uh, concessionaires are involved in those projects. So, you know, do they even benefit uh, from projects like this? Because he did indicate that eleven projects will get the benefit of these norms. But if there is a moratorium angle involved, then you know the net uh, trickle down uh, effect of these benefits, you know, should should almost be close to negligible. So, what are your thoughts on that? No, I, I think I fully concur with uh, Mr. R. P. Singh's uh, statement saying that these uh, six laning projects, uh, because of the moratorium involved, I don't think they will be as favorably impacted as the four laning projects. That is one. Secondly, if you look at a, a penal interest rate of two percent over and above. Uh, say the bank rate of 10.75, that brings us to 12.75, which is almost the uh, market rate for getting loans for these kind of corporates uh, from the market. So if they at all wanted to go ahead with these projects, they would have gone ahead even in the earlier regime. So I think the six laning projects are not going to take off uh, under this special dispensation. There's yet another reason, which is saying, I think the ministry and NHA have recently debated the uh, toll policy for six laning projects saying during construction period when tolling commences uh, there's a cap of 75 percent that is the current proposal and secondly saying that beyond their original timeline they will not be allowed to continue with uh, tolling so all of this will actually negatively impact the six laning projects in particular and therefore mr rp singh's comment is very valid saying i think this will impact only the four laning projects and not the six laning projects so, uh, I'll squeeze in one more question. There, there are a lot of questions, you know, as to, you know, the traffic growth, etc. Will these projects be even picked up, you know, once they do come for rebidding, given the state of the sector? But my question is a little more technical. Uh, you know, uh, uh, once uh, uh, in the premium rescheduling, the NPV of the project has to remain, con uh, you know, constant. How will the how will the NHEI and the developers, you know, come at the discount rate? And will that, uh, you know, uh, uh, will the developers be able to contest that if they are not comfortable with the discounting rate that is being used, uh, you know, to arrive? at that NPV value for the project? See, I, I think when they agree to come back to the table for a particular project, I think between NHA and the developer, they will agree to some discounting rate which uh, maintains NPV neutrality. So I think at this point in time to kickstart the project, there will be some agreement on the table. But the real issue is saying pending not having a regulator, pending not having the DRT panel uh, and the bill passed, what happens a year or two down the line, I think that is the larger challenge for us. So I think that the big issue is not settling on a discounting rate for NPV calculations the year and now, because I think highway developers will come to some settlement between NHA and themselves as regards the discounting rate. The question really is what happens two years down the line when once again, because of economic uncertainties or because of regulatory clearance not having been received or land acquisition not having been done, they wish to go for some kind of dispute resolution. I can see a repeat of that unless, as I said earlier, the concession agreements are put into place, the clauses are renegotiated, or alternatively a regulator is put into place, or a DRT panel is put into place. Those are the bigger steps that await us over and above what has happened yesterday. All right, I think that would be all for my side. Ekta, over to you. All right, Pragya, thanks very much for joining in. And Mr. Ramasubramanyam, we've completely run out of time, so thank you very much for joining in as well.